Netflix bought the worldwide distribution rights, except for China, at the Cannes Film Festival this year for $30 million. Next Gen exhibited on Netflix on September 7, 2018. The film is written and directed by Joe Sander and Kevin R. Adams. This isn't their first project together. The pair worked as a director-writer team on a 2014 short called Gear, which explores generally similar themes in Next Gen. The pair also worked together on the Shane actor Tim Burton animated feature Nine, with Adams as art director and Sander as animation director. But the big surprise for most of the CG community was to learn that Next Gen is done entirely on the open source animation package called Blender, put to use for the film by Tangent Animation of Toronto, Canada. Jeff Bell, one of the founders at Tangent Animation, was one of the first animators to work on Maya at the R&D phase back in 1994-1998 development. He made the jump to Blender and is actively pushing the new development implementations and custom-made solutions as part of Blender Foundation project. Houdini and Fume effects were used to deliver VDB volumes. Substance Painter and Photoshop were added also into the mix. Blender can also create some amazing VDB simulations on any kind of computers, including Linux, PCs and Macs. Rigging Dojo had a marvelous personal interview with David Hearn and Charles Warlaw, two amazing Blender artists who tell us how was the rigging process for Next Gen. Using Blender's link and append functions along with custom libraries, they were able to bring a pipeline workflow for Blender. If you want to listen to the full podcast, link is on the description below. In a post from Blender artist Jeff from Tangent Animation writes, I can confirm Tangent is the primary production facility for this movie and the use of Blender in our pipeline. We're effectively 100% Blender other than plugging in apps in a few areas to supplement departmental workflows. The budget for next gen was also five times greater than that of OZ. This is why there is such a large difference in the quality of the movies. Considering they worked in version 2.78, there is much advantage on the next future release of Blender. Alongside with Substance Painter going into VR, we can already establish Blender would be a huge advantage to produce this kind of contents. Concerning lighting for the movie, senior lightning artist Justin Gorand writes, quote, Early on, motion blur was a big problem causing huge render times, but thanks to Stefan's implementations of Embry, we were finally able to render motion blur with a predictable increase in render times, instead of the random spikes we were getting before. Average memory usage was 60 to 70 gigabytes, 120-140 gigabytes for the bigger shots. This movie would be impossible to render with GPUs. We use CPUs. Cycles was used for everything though our version of Cycles was modified, with Stefan's and Brie Core and Cryptomats, which were beyond valuable for compositing. Caches were stored in FX files, nothing fancy there. Dynamics like cloth were baked out into Alembics. We rendered in linear space and used Filmic as a loot. End quote. Interactive to real-time performance on truly dynamic scenes, as shown here in this demo. Here you can see the ray tracing, of fully dynamic content. Stefan Werner integrated Cryptomat 30 for Tangent Animation's core development and brought Blender into a stage of production level among with other integrated tools Tangent Animation is creating in-house. To see Cryptomat at work, check the link in the description below. Embry was used for motion blur. These are Intel libraries that help generate a better motion blur on scenes directly pointing to functions inside the CPU. You may check the link also on the description below. Stefan also did some incredible work on volumetric rendering efficiency, adding the Intel Embry cords to cycles and generally improving the cycles renderer for use on next gen. Render times were extremely reasonable and manageable, even with full 3D blur and in-camera depth of field used throughout the film. Shane Jackson was the surfacing supervisor on the film and he wrote, We created a lot of shader node networks in-house and some custom hair and skin shaders too. 
The challenges came when we were doing massive sets and needed techniques to cover wide areas while retaining resolution, something we couldn't do with the assets of textures from Substance Painter alone. So long story short, shaders totally in Blender, created with methods that I'm sure you guys have seen, and as much as procedural stuff as we could get away with. We will be working with the Blender Institute to reincorporating our changes into Blender where possible, as we believe it's important for the community at large, and we welcome others to improve on the work we've done so that we can benefit from those improvements on our upcoming films. The average per frame was 3.76 hours on DCI 2K format for next gen. Some sequences render a lot more quickly, some took a lot longer. Think water effects via Lambic Catch, 20 to 30 VDBs in a single shot for smoke, fire and explosions and other things. There are obviously main reduce and artistic retakes involved, but if you eliminate these, there is a rough breakdown. 93 minute movie is equal to 133,920 frames at 24 frames per second. They render five different versions of the movie, English, Mono, English, and Mandarin Stereo for the Chinese market. So this is in total 669,600 frames. Each frame took 3.76 hours on average. One machine would take 2,517,696 hours or 104,904 days to render the movie. We had around 2,500 nodes working on it, which equals roughly 242 days. In reality, the Mandarin lip sync was only done for the shots that warranted it for facial animation, which was about 350 shots. Those renders were done by using an animated rendered region, targeting just the mouth. So those renders tended to take one-fourth or half of the time of the full renders. These regions were then composited on top of the English renders to replace the lip sync. When we needed to modify a specific pass, we extracted the pass from the beauty pass, which was the main pass used in our composites, modify it and then add it back to the beauty pass. Cryptomats were crucial for this. The compositor is slow, but it was fine for our purposes. We have plans to add catching to it and add a mask channel to notes that are missing it. There are workarounds, but it'd be nice to be able to use all nodes in the same fashion. Many shots use an amazing add-on by Sam Wald that brought in rigged characters and instant them intelligently while applying unique armatures, allowing for randomized and offset action blocks. The crowd running near the end was largely Golem Crowd and Maya, exported through Alembic. A custom script was used to reassign materials to the Alembic object when they were imported back in Blender. The robot crowd near the very end was kind of custom, so they faked it using end particles that gave them free collision avoidance and allowed them to apply fields to art direct the movement. Long story short, if you can use hair for instancing massive crowd shots, do it. Cycles instancing is fantastic when employed correctly. This makes up for the 99% information directly from the forum's Are threads. Sure you Are you this? ready to start using Blender? I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell button for instant notifications and comment what do you like most about NextGen. My name is Pierre Schiller, thank you very much.